All right. Uno, dos, tres. Okay. Hello, Kyron. Hey. Unfortunately, your screen just froze, so hopefully it fixes itself. Oh, yeah. Me, I'm hoping so, oh, too. Okay, we're good. We're good. It's, is it a, is it a uh, like, is it a good face? Is it, like, am I, like, well, it's over. closed? Huh? It's, it's already back, so I don't even remember. Okay, cool. No one, no one does that, hopefully. No one will. Um, no one will ever know. It's our secret. Cool, cool. Um, so, Kyron, thank you for thank you for having this interview with me. Of um, and anyone listening, this is the first Crimson interview for Crimson Media. It's an I'm, honor. <laughs> oh, it's an honor uh, too. Well, thanks. Um, yeah, I'm Ellis Beaumont, and yeah, hopefully this will be. It will be the first of many interviews. Um, so how are you doing? How's your day going? Pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really done much. Today's my day off, so chilling. Um, just kind of cleaning up the house a little bit, like my room and everything. Oh, I, I can understand that. I just moved into a new place, and it's just... Back on. It's, it's really good. I'm just cleaning every week. Like, the good thing is I don't have roommates. The bad thing is no one wants to split dishes. Mm. You know, yeah. Not, not me. Um, Works for you. Yeah. And um, so <laughs> you're a you're a tattoo apprentice right now. Yeah, uh, I've been an apprentice for I think like maybe three weeks, two weeks now, three, four. I don't know, something like that. Okay, it's Just pretty. Just by so fast, all the weeks. So it's been a minute, but like, yeah, it's still pretty new. Yeah. Awesome. And so you, uh, so I know, I know you have artwork and for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Kyron is a musician and a pretty, I think, I personally, I think it's pretty good artwork. Like your, your Instagram handle is Kyron art. Yep. Without an I kind of like the music name, just no M. Okay, and I'll um I'll be sure to edit that into the screen somewhere. Lovely. Yeah. Um and I noticed you do a lot of um celebrity um uh yes, um what's like portraits? Term? Portraits, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I like to just draw I like to draw people because I like to draw all the little details of the face. It's fun and I like to kind of make people look kind of undead because I feel like I guess with the genres that I like to listen to, I feel like it's just like a darker vibe. So I like to kind of just like have that shown in the in the work. Plus it just has kind of become like the thing I do with like people's eyes and stuff. But yeah, but I'm kind of trying to move on to more interesting stuff. Cause I realized as I've been like drawing for tattoos, it's like, I gotta, you know, widen the, I guess, spectrum of things I can do. And um, I started drawing I really have been like obsessed with like wet specimens lately um and so what I've is been, that? you know what I have one let me go grab it okay okay sorry no worries it's a little it's a little mouse oh that's rad yeah okay okay I got this at curious nature anyway um that is so yeah curious. just like weird undead or I guess not undead things just dead things hmm. um but yeah, what have been work? What have been working on? What have I been working on? There we go. Um, like this, like two-headed baby, that has like it's like dissected, so you can see like the organs and stuff. So I thought that was fun. Okay, uh, okay, and that's a little more intense than what I've seen on your. I know Instagram. I'm climbing okay. the ranks. I know. Interesting here. Okay. And then I started, I think, like a little pig wet specimen, but it's also like open, so you can see inside. Um, but I don't know. I just really like the the colors and stuff of... sure yeah the to the tones of i'm sure um you're talking about the dissection stuff yeah like all the organs like normally you know if they were recently alive it would be more red and stuff but... sure yeah the tones are, are very desaturated specific. almost blue and pinks and stuff sure yellows and I, I think it looks cool yeah yeah it's it's unique in nature you know that, yeah that specific tone no i um, think that's red balls too okay okay that's popular for tattoos too. 
Yeah, here, let me show you the thing I just did. Currently drawing a bobcat, so that's pretty cool. Oh, hell yeah. I don't know how well it will show up, but yeah. Uh, on my end, pretty well. That is rad. Hell, heck Thanks. Yeah. Heck yeah, I'm, I'm actually a landscaper exclusive. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm trying to slowly breed black roses. Ooh, well, send do. me some if you can. Like, I'll take it. It's going to be a while because it yeah. takes it's it's a I'm still learning how to do it but real quick um since you showed the mouse I'll show everyone this dung beetle Ooh, is that a little beetle yeah it's a dung beetle is it like a real one? Oh yeah that's sick yeah. that's cool I really want some of those like um like mounted like dead moths you know what I mean sure sure oh one sec it's gotta be careful don't break it their exoskeletons are really strong but really I'm still i'm still at least a hundred times lar <laughs> larger than it <laughs> no dude when i was bringing this over i was like watch i drop this on camera i would literally cry <laughs> oh. isn't he cute though His little tail and everything yeah <laughs> yeah i mean I showed my grandma and she was like hey that's right by your bed and you sleep next to it <laughs> <laughs> the sun hits it in the morning for real dude i have a i have a salt lamp and when i turn it on it like kind of has the mouse like glow it's great yeah no i think that's really cool i i i think that's you're appreciating it it's yeah you know, for it's sure. not it's not every you know <laughs> people appreciate things in different ways um i mean when i was younger my great grandparents you know they were hunters but mm -hmm. um you know they had a few deer on on the wall and everything but their their point of view was you know, they thought it was the most beautiful thing in the world, you know? Yeah, I it's mean, a like... form of appreciation and as long intentions as it's are good. Sorry, ethically go sourced? No, you're fine. Sorry, I just wanted to say, as long as it's, like, ethically sourced, like, that's great. I mean, like, I'm, I don't really care, like, if you're a hunter or whatever, but, like, I personally like to, you know, that's my thing. It's kind of, like, it's already, you know, gone, so you might as well, like, keep it living on in a way, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's that's how I look at it too. Your um, it again. I think it's a way of appreciating, you know. Um, it's yeah. <laughs> it lives on after death. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And the intentions are good by the the person who, you know, like mine is with the dung beetle. I <laughs> think that's beautiful. Yeah, it's not like I'm like shaking this or something. Oh, I'm yeah. just playing it. Yeah, nicely. you would have lost me if you did that. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> like the what is it from Finding Nemo? That girl that like shook the fish in the bag. Yeah, poking at the thing too. The braces, yeah, she had braces. Like no one has the that that was those anymore. The ones that are outside, and like, unless you have like like you were injured, injured. Yeah. yeah, those are normal braces. Um, I think people have like Invisalign more often though. Yeah, well, it's it's We're in the future now, guys. Yeah, plastic on your teeth. Yeah, it takes longer apparently though. But anyway, yeah, um, yeah, um, looking at your um, your Instagram art page, and bear in mind anyone who's listening, she, uh, Kyron has like fifteen social media accounts, <laughs> <laughs> at least three on Instagram, right? Your it's uh, Karen music, Karen art, and one other one. I have a personal, but oh, it's like, personal. We don't talk yeah. about that one. I mean, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> I prefer, I would prefer people that I don't really know super well to follow like the other yes. one. Yeah, the me the music and the art one is pretty interesting to oh. like. Uh, I know. Uh, okay, yeah. So you have you have Josh Holmes. Jo like Josh from Queens of the Stone Age. Yeah, yeah, you have a yeah, few yeah, yeah. Years. That really, really cool. Um, Thank you. I think you know what? Let me show you. I think I have it. It's the first page of my little portfolio. Wait, hold on. Okay. Ugh. There you go. Uh, down a little bit. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was like, don't want to show them my information. Right. Um, I'll edit that out if something happens. Okay, I tried covering it, but I think we're good. <laughs> you might have to edit that little conversation out, like. <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah. And I was thinking about the the animal part. I'm like, where was that going? <laughs> sure. Ah, uh, you know, it's this. It's no, it was very... great. I'm just like, I don't know. I started to sound dumb. <laughs> I I'm not a big person on censoring. Uh, yeah. Things. Just when I mess up on an interview. Uh, you know it's like, all i'll make Hollywood. you look bad but yes. as long as i look fine <laughs> yeah it's honest we're doing honest interviews here yeah. <laughs> um so yeah uh i i just thought that was really cool undead josh holmes um and you 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 have a few trent resners i do i do like a good trent where's the one i don't know if you saw my comment I did. I saw that I was eating, I think, at work, and I was like, nipples. Perfect. I'm like, true. Yeah. If, if, whenever anyone here, um, goes anybody to here see... likes a good nipple. Right. Yeah. So on <laughs> Kyron's Instagram, there are excellent portraits and a few of Trent Reznor. And I swear, you spent like 15 hours on his nipple. <laughs> I actually don't think it took like super long because I wanted to move on fast because like this feels weird as I was painting it. <laughs> Okay. So I was okay. like, let's just get her done. Sure. Um, uh, what was I have a story actually about oh. that painting, real quick. Yeah, um, please. I had to like make a certain amount of paintings for like art class in school. So I turned that in like to my teacher, like, and then looking back, I'm like, why did I turn in Trent Reznor's project? Like, I'm so bad, or I feel so bad. Like, um, like, I want to apologize to my art teacher. <laughs> Sorry for handing in Trent Reznor's nipple with a blindfold on. What, what grade did you get for it? Um, I mean, I, I got a good grade. Like, I think I, it was like, you have to turn them out. And it's like making up a portfolio. And I think I had like a, not thesis, but like why I was doing it. And I was saying I'm making a tattoo portfolio. That was my goal. Okay. Senior year, I kind of got to just like not do whatever but like I was in like the honors art with like two two of my buddies um and we all kind of just you know good time good times yeah um um with some of the portraits you have on your Instagram or or how how old would you say some of them are like or how which which ones are the newest the ones on top right and how long were you sitting yeah. on those before you it's been a minute since I've like posted anything but I've been drawing like constantly for my apprenticeship so like there's definitely stuff that I have that I haven't like posted but um yeah I'd say the Robert Smith one is probably the most recent but cool yeah yeah let me look at that one again cool yeah the cure is great thanks for the I mean yeah the cure is great I don't know why I said thanks <laughs> thank you I am in the cure I am Robert Smith <laughs> wow <laughs> I know you're actually you know this interview's changing yeah <laughs> exclusive <laughs> all right um yep. I'm a shapeshifter I did not know that okay exclusive yep. everywhere for real um the cure oh the queens of the stone age let's backtrack real quick um their last two i'd like i i'm having a brain fart right now but the one before the newest album um, and there was silence. No, let me look it up real quick. I say it's one of my favorites, but I don't know the name. Uh, oh, like clockwork. Yes. Dot dot dot. Like clockwork. Hesitation. One, huh. Hesitation. Yes, like clockwork. Like clockwork. Um. The last, the more latest one they did, really good, but like Clockwork, I freaking loved it. I loved every song on it. And yeah. And like, what, what do you think about that one? Like, uh, do you like their older stuff maybe? But like, I, I bring that album up to anyone who wants to talk to me about Queens of the Stone Age. Right. Um, I mean, like, I definitely listen to those two, like, more recent ones, but I'm definitely more into, like, older albums usually just in general of artists I usually like their older work mm. but I do let me see because it's been a minute since I've like yeah I don't really listen to villains too much but like clockwork's pretty good I think so you like songs for the deaf era um I'd say my favorite is probably lullabies to paralyze 
or they're self-titled. Those are both really good. And Era Vulgaris. That one's really weird, but I like it. Yeah, I'm always, and I mean, you, you probably are too, and a lot of people are. They try to give the newer stuff a chance. Mm-hmm. And if it clicks, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, yeah. So a lot of times, newer albums seem to like take longer for me to warm up to yeah exactly yeah yeah i feel that when it's like earlier stuff if it usually you're sure when you like a song like it's it's usually right away if it's like you know but Mm -hmm. sometimes so i noticed something correct me if i'm wrong so so kyron here she has an ep out called uh sleeping through slipping through yes slipping through Okay, edit right here. Yeah, I was like, you can if you want to. <laughs> I only read it like a hundred times. Okay, <laughs> it's fine. Slipping through EP. Slip, slipping, slipping, slipping. Yes. Like um, your mind like slipping. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, slipping through. Um, is your EP, and did it come out last year around this time, December, right? It was December tenth, twenty twenty. Okay. Yeah, so it's almost a year. Oh my god, I should have like a little like anniversary or something. I was gonna ask, do you well now that you realize, um, were you thinking of something like that for when like releasing? Oh, okay. Something, yeah. Um I I don't know. It's been like a minute since I've like actually written an entire song. Like I have like one done, but I wanna like make sound nicer because I feel like it's very like all these layers are like stacked and I feel like they could sound a little bit more separate but I do have one song and I don't know because like you know ideas change very much over time but I think I might want to call whatever I release next the name of this song so I don't really want to like say it yet in case I change my mind or in case I go through with it it's like a little surprise but um so yeah I have like a song written and I have lyrics and an idea for next song but I've kind of just been I don't know I've been pretty occupied with tattoo stuff which isn't bad it's great and I'm you know it's cool I just want to give things time for themselves you know what I mean mm-hmm. so yeah. I don't wanna, like rush anything I guess is what I'm saying right uh, inspiration strikes when inspiration strikes yeah for sure so I don't want to like push anything because I feel like I kind of have been trying to push myself to write and that's not what I did when I made my EP. So I, I don't want to make it sound forced. Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. Um, we to have yeah. fun. Tangent there. Right. Um, how did you choose your cover art? Like what, what did that come from on your EP? Um, that's an interesting story because um, the album art went through like a bunch of different like ideas and I made a couple that I thought were going to be it. And then I um, I remembered I took this picture of, it's like the costume room from my high school. And I just thought it looked like really dark and creepy and kind of like haunted. And I felt like that just fit the vibe like perfectly because the album is based on, the EP is basically about um, like my last year at high school, essentially. So okay. it's like, why not use the picture for the, the what's the word setting of the plot almost you know what I mean um and I just feel like it it has like all the right colors and it's just I feel like it like fits the the idea of what I want my music to sound like and like look like I guess so kind of all goes together but yeah it's a picture taken at my high school right on I yeah I, I dig it um I like the angle that's what like Thanks. stands out to me, you know, this, the lighting on it, you know, illuminates enough. I realized after a while it had been like, after it had been out for a minute, I was like, these are mannequin butts. Is that, is that kind of funny? But I was like, I don't know. Um, that wasn't my intention, but I was like, you know what? It is what it is. <laughs> yeah. You know, you got to look twice at it kind of, then you yeah. realize it's mannequin butts, you know? Which is probably a good thing. People look at the cover more, you know. I mean, sex sells, right? Like, here's some ass, right? <laughs> right, just right there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm trying right to see on. if I can find any old versions of what I have, but oh. probably not. Let me see. Yeah. You know what? You can um, 
Let me, let me kill this one. You can do what you got to do, and I'll see if I can find anything. Okay. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, I just, I thought that, I thought that cover was really interesting and the lighting's really good. The angle, you know, I, what sticks out to me is like the base of the cage. Just, I don't know. I like that you got the full uh, image of it being a cage. Thanks. You know, like you could see where it's planted in the ground and yeah. Did you, you edited it, you did all the editing f for it for the artwork. Yeah. I, it's all me. I used um, this like website online where you can like glitch things. And so I, I did that a couple of times to get like the right one. Um, uh, Glitch.com. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. I think it's called, <laughs> let me see. Photo Mosh, if anybody wants to try it out. Photo Mosh. Yeah. That's what Kyron uses. It is. <laughs> You know what? I don't know if I can find anything, but I do have. Well, you know, we can always, if you find something, I can just uh, edit it into the video. That would be a good idea. But I had, I had this and this was originally going to be like used for it. And then I was like, I don't know, but it's a little, it's a little edgy, but I feel like it just fit the idea of like some of the songs. Nuns. Cool. It's an interesting photo. Did you just find that and then thought, perfect? It was a card I received from a family member. And then I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm going to draw on it. Okay. okay. Like a postcard? Yeah, I think it was like a like a birthday thing or a, I don't know. There's some like pun on the back about like 100 nuns couldn't because your sins or something like that. I don't know. It was uh, something <laughs> crazy, but it's funny. Yeah. Um, that could be a shirt. Uh, we gotta edit that out and make sure. Dude, I'm like merch. <laughs> yeah, here you go, merch idea. That would be a cool T-shirt. That image you had. It's giving like like kind of like '90s like band T-shirt. The thing on the front and then on the back it would say that or something. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of cool. Too bad I don't know how to do merch. <laughs> well, or expensive. So what, uh, what do you utilize when you're creating in general? Like, uh, what, as in like inspiration, do you, do you like have, do you have instances where you'll paint or make music when you're angry, happy, sad, all, all those does what, or what else like inspires you to, that you've noticed that is consistent? Um, well, I definitely make music for more negative emotions because that's just how I kind of like get it out I've never been like I'm so happy let's write a song sure. um I would definitely say anger is probably a, a good uh inspiration for writing a good loud song um but I feel like music is almost like visual to me so um this is so dumb but I I go on tumblr and I look at like really weird pictures of like abandoned rooms and like um, I wouldn't say like necessarily what do I say this in like a, like I don't know there's like weird pictures of like maggots or like just like gross kind of or like graves here let me see okay, just like so weird emptiness okay and so you will take those images maybe put them on a screen and kind of just write to them or create, yeah sometimes I'll just like scroll through and I'll just kind of be like okay this is like what I want my song to sound like even though it's a visual like it kind of just translates I guess sure like you you have you have an image it has a lot of melancholy things going on to you like when you see something empty or like that you, you so kind of just think oh that, yeah yeah nice people Creepy save though. teeth like their baby teeth there's like a cross and it's just right like... right Gloomy, you know, but I yeah, wonder, is that an abandoned building? Because it seems like someone just took that, and then you know, from other perceptions, it's kind of creepy to me. It yeah. kind of is a little bit not in a bad way, but like, uh, like it haunted, maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I like the I guess it's especially like the colors too, because I feel like I like a very like bluish tealish tone, 
to pictures and I feel like my music kind of I wanted to have a bluish tealish tone if that makes any sense um very like pale desaturated which I think translates to it's like metaphors you can use and like the imagery you can make up can fit an emotion and I feel like it all just kind of like connects and um that's how I try to write I kind of try to like okay I want this to sound like bugs crawling or like this empty deserted room that's like grimy and sure yeah yeah when um I mean when when I hear music like uh if we're, ta when we're talking about your music I think of like some if it was in a movie you know where what's kind of fitting for it um you know what and, and I mean directors do this they you know they'll take the video they shot and try to put music to it mm. and sometimes it's not even the key that they say is you know uh that particular emotion i mean that there's certain keys of music that they use for a certain emotional effect of mm. course um but you know translating it to like the color tones in an image like in my in my old bedroom it was all um uh burgundy all my walls were burgundy and I did that because there was something I read about how burgundy is supposed to encourage creativity. <laughs> and I noticed I, I listened to a lot more more alternative rock when I had painted my room red. It just kind of happened. And like some underground hip hop from like Michigan, to be specific, like Atmosphere. Um, well, Gorillaz too. Like I remember I really, I always liked Gorillaz, but like I was listening to their stuff when my room was burgundy so that's what that's what comes to me when you when you speak of that just uh tying images and the tones to you know uh to what you're feeling and kind of going off that so that's yeah. interesting that's really interesting um yeah brain works what's uh what are your like your first memories of music like or where did you start with with that like mm, this is kind of embarrassing but I would say when I was really young and that made me want to play guitar but then um you know before that I liked Nirvana you know what let's pretend that I was into Nirvana the most first I kind of was you know what let's start that over let's, let's cut that. <laughs> Edit. Okay. I would so, say yeah I liked a lot of Nirvana and like my mom would play a lot of like Green Day and um so I liked oh and Alice in Chains so I was like kind of into like right. grunge, super young like elementary school um and then okay so that was the foundation and then I did like Ed Sheeran and that made me want to play guitar and then I got into kind of like I guess you know pop punk shit and then that eventually led me to more rock and you know just this whole thing to where I am now so um okay but yeah I would just try to write songs on an acoustic guitar and all my first songs were very like four chords like the really simple like E minor G C stuff um and I would just like write in this like really ugly little journal that I had um and then like it's weird because like I used to kind of get really sad when I'd write for some reason I don't really know why like when I was like younger um but then I, I feel like I just didn't write music for like a really long time and then I think like junior year of high school I kind of got back into writing music and it was very like electronic I guess like I was listening to a lot of like Kaylee Morg and Paris I guess so it was kind of these like dreamy pop dark songs that were like they were okay um but then I think I kind of like drastically went into more like then senior year it was like Queens of the Stone Age, Silver Chair, Orgy, Nine Inch Nails. Okay, so um, that's when the in, so that's about when the industrial uh, influences yeah. came in. Okay. Um, okay. and then uh, I think yeah, I think I yeah I finished my EP during like quarantine. So then quarantine happened and I got into even more industrial stuff like ministry and skinny puppy and 
I think I think that's about it because I was still pretty like surface level now I've like delved into like the whole thing um but yeah so I just take little bits and pieces of the stuff that I'm listening to and I kind of just like turn that into my own and I would say that's how I write too like I'll listen to a lot of songs that I like the sound of and uh like I feel like it'll fit like the emotion that I'm trying to write about and so I kind of use that as like a blueprint I guess for the song I'm writing so yeah oh, right on yeah I mean what music is you know we we build it off someone who's done it before I mean mm -hmm. everything's like that every industry every everything you know it, we give example we have to get examples of something done before and build on top of it and yeah you, you know you take your inspiration where you can get it and what intrigues you so right on yeah there's a photo of you on your music instagram which is just kyron right yeah okay no i think it's no it's kyron music kyron That's music and the personal is just i'll put the handle right right here um and there's a picture of you with a drum machine and your guitar and i'll have it right here and if if i may i was hoping to like use that on the video and everything you're currently frozen so if you're showing it i can't oh how long have i been frozen for you're frozen or you're not frozen anymore you're good to okay <laughs> um let me find it again oh it is definitely on your music page um yeah i just i thought that was interesting because i didn't see the picture before it's actually kind of your writing setup you have yeah it's right here oh okay i kind of didn't remember what that was but now that I one. yeah that's actually from a video but i didn't post it because i didn't know if um i would use what i was playing in it as a song so i was like we'll keep it a secret but yeah <laughs> it's a cool photo um what's the no sorry if i got too close to the mic there what's the drum machine and synthesizer you're using um i think let me see well the the synth is a chord monologue and then the drum machine is a kawaii r50 and it's from the 80s that was like a present for like christmas or something that's something. Yeah, that's really cool i wonder what albums that one's been on before i have a i have this uh copy book that's done by all well, my classes I, I own the book but i don't remember who, who wrote it <laughs> um joe manfield and it's just full of drum machines like from the first ones to modern ones and what albums they were used on and everything and i think it was your song plague or it may have been well i noticed i've noticed some of the like older school drum samples on some of your music so I, I figured either, oh, she either had them in GarageBand or something. But then I saw a photo. I was like, oh, she's using a era-appropriate drum machine. That is actually not. Well, there's this website that my friend, like, she writes music to. And she showed me this website. And it's, like, just a bunch of, like, drum samples and stuff. Mm -hmm. I want to say, it's, is it drum bit? Well, that's cool, too. I mean, a lot of those are sampled from drum machines. Any, you know like i use i use some too you know not in my yeah. recordings but i have them because i thought drummed it this is great um Move it over drum bit yeah okay so i use that a lot but um actually for something to do i think i used the volca drum which is also for because i didn't have that drum machine yet the the vintage one um, oh well that's cool too yeah I, so yeah I, there was garage band chord monologue and vocal drum and drum bit cool and then a the guitar this one i think i wrote it on that one oh, okay yeah nice yeah i i the the drums you use were very effective and i still got that um that tone from it that you know that i would you know with the drum machine too like even if the ones of your songs weren't used, it wasn't, it wasn't used on, I, you know, I was convinced it was just because of the tone of the drums. Well, thank you. Yes. Compliments. 
Um, going down my list here. Dead air is not good, but it's okay. It's fine. Um, we can edit our lips. Yes, we have the technology to. I can Hollywoodize this whole thing. Um, we actually talked about this a little while ago. Um, do you find your original ideas come to fruition? You know, like, do they change over time? Um, how close do they get to, like, your original? Uh, like, if, if you're writing a song, does, is it, does, like, the tone and everything come out? or you know the way you want it or does it kind of end up somewhere else so it definitely changes a lot depending on what kind of happens I feel like anything creatively kind of just starts out as this like little thing and it just kind of like you can't really control it it just kind of becomes whatever it's going to become um and you can't really do anything about it it's like this is going to be what it's going to be um but I definitely like start out with like ideas or I'll be like okay I definitely want this song to be like heavy with synths during the chorus or something um but even then like that can change if you end up realizing that's just not going to really like work um mm -hmm. but yeah um it's been like a, a while since I've like went through with like really writing lately because I've I feel like I've been finishing more like instrumental kind of sounding songs um okay but yeah I have this one that I'm like stuck on because I want it to sound more kind of like doom metal-y. Um, but yeah, but I don't know. Maybe it'll end up sounding really EBM, like probably not. But, um, you know, you know, I don't really know where a song's going to go until it's going, I guess. You said doom metal. Um, I don't know if you've heard of them. I recommend them witches. That's the band. I will check them out. I'm not like super into doom metal, but I do like a little bit like Chelsea Wolf or her side project, Miss Piss or mm -hmm. um, King Woman. It's really good. Yeah, Jeremy actually introduced me to Chelsea Wolf's music. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, he kind of did for me too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Thanks. we can thank Jeremy for our immaculate taste in music. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He does. Shout out to Wormhead. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Represent. Fun. Dude, wait. <laughs> oh, you have it right there? I do. What cover do you have? Okay, you got the blue one, too. I have a little pin, too. Do you have the pin? You didn't give me a pin. Damn. Maybe I'm like a bigger Wormhead fan than you. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I love pins, too. Yeah, I am getting a bunch for Christmas. Okay. I did. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we're yeah. hoping to make some. That those and stickers would be our first merch. Well, I'll be grabbing that for sure. Awesome. Yeah. I get some free ones if if you um want to work with us with using your artwork. Yeah, for sure. I could even like draw something because I feel like um I don't know what you're talking about from my art Instagram, but I feel like I could design something that would really fit a sticker better. Okay. We'll get into that later. Um but yeah, yeah I'm 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 excited um about that yeah send me send me what you like have right now i'm interested to see awesome um doom metal so they don't they didn't call it doom metal back in the day so you like black sabbath uh no i like i said I, i'm not super into doom metal i'd say i'm more like right now i'd say my influences for what i want to sound like for at least this one specific song is um Chelsea Wolf, Mrs. Piss, gotcha. King Woman, the band Whores, and just like the entirety of like With Teeth by Nine Inch Nails. Um, yeah, I'd say that's like a good representation of like the the vibe I want to try to do. Okay, somewhere somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, real quick, your song Plague. Uh, maybe we can dive into some lyrics here, but um. What are you talking about in plague? Because when I hear when I heard plague, I was I was washing dishes earlier, and you know, it was uh, it was sunny place. out. Yeah, it was sunny out. So I thought, you know what, I know the song. <laughs> yeah, I already picked plague That's anyway. Sunny day yeah. song for sure. I get like you're talking about selfishness, like someone's being selfish over you know choosing something you know their 
needs or whatever they're what they need in life over someone else and am I close or um I would say it's kind of just about like feeling not betrayed but like kind of but then also somebody kind of just like showing their true kind of colors but at the end of the day it's kind of like well you know whatever happened happened and it's you know everything is kind of I guess like it is what it is kind of thing um but yeah definitely more of like a okay you did that that's not really like what I thought we kind of like not agreed on but you know what I mean like kind of just like so this is who you are kind of thing. Um, okay okay yeah. so okay so like is this the perspective of someone discovering another person is not who they're said they were or you thought they were and when then you said well it's okay so there's like some um uh there's like the ending is is all right because you've learned from that um you know what i'm gonna it's been a minute let me look at what i even fucking wrote well you know i'm i'm just someone i'm just like a listener listening into your you know, lyrics, it's music's cool in the way that it can be specific, or it can be really broad. So if I'm mm -hmm. like, if I'm like getting it wrong here, you know, well, me. I also, I like to see how other people interpret it, because mm -hmm. I feel like ultimately, ultimately, that's what music's supposed to be like, you listen to these things, but you apply it to your own life. And maybe this person wrote it about something completely different. But whatever it means to you is like, well, that's what I, I wanted. Like, I want other people to be able to relate, I guess. Sure. Um, yeah, when I when I hear it, I like a lot of times I hear lyrics when I, when I pay attention to the lyrics, I kind of come up with a story that may or may not be related to it. But it kind of it's like when you said looking at tones or pictures, that's what comes out of my brain, like because I like to write. So, um, yeah, I just I got a I got a conversation between two people about what, you know, someone being selfish, you know, not listening to their, uh, you know, letting them be happy in life or not letting them uh, succeed kind of a thing let you know one person wants to succeed and they have to you know get in the way that's what I kind of got from it what, you had something to add or? inaccurate I'd say that's actually pretty good good interpretation um I'm trying All to right. think if there's any if we want to talk about lyrics let me see if there's ones that aren't so like fuck you because like I have like okay yeah <laughs> but i think cult is definitely about like clicky groups of people and then like when are they going to realize that that doesn't matter and like you don't need to like it's okay to go outside of that little bubble sometimes and like for yourself kind of a thing um measure reality outside of the tribal yeah you know flash um and it's also like, um, at the time I was kind of like, well, I want to be a part of this group, but then like now that it's over, it's kind of like, well, that didn't matter. And I feel like people make themselves out to be a lot more like, not, like a little bit more interesting than they really are. And then you get to know them and you're like, oh, this is actually not really what I wanted. And I'm going to stick to just being myself because that's actually better i think everyone will wander into that from parts of their lives because they want they want their lives to be more exciting you know be more um just more interesting story um yeah like you see like on instagram like they post like this all this cool like me with my friends doing all this stuff and then you realize like when you're having fun like you don't really document it and so it's like are you guys really enjoying each other's company or are you just like is this for a show right um i mean it's been said before but instagram for example you are putting a, you know you're, you're putting a, a front not a front from a lack of a better term it's the best I would say version that's of you accurate yeah well you know front i i kind of take as um totally fake you know well it's curated you know, mm -hmm. this is your curated self, you know, and, you know, certain certain pages are a little more honest than others. So, you know, um, it's definitely 
you you're you're creating your own you're creating the perception that you're hoping people see other people yeah see. for sure and thereby you know if you you know making your life seem more interesting and yeah not not enough people see see that about themselves and they really should because we're all we're all interesting even if even if someone else says we're not <laughs> you know it's like i don't know that's we have a bad habit of doubt, doubting ourselves mm-hmm. is that what the song is about <laughs> uh kind of i would say it's like that was definitely me, yeah. like it's like clicky and then it's like but for why for what like in the end it doesn't really mean anything it doesn't amount to anything once it's broken up and then you realize how stupid it is you know sure yeah i like that okay yeah um i mean to get very literal that's what i think about cults really like be careful but you know you want friends you want like-minded people but uh give up some of your own um you know you're figuring things out not by yourself which everyone should everyone should kind of tackle uh you know certain things you know by themselves at times i think you know we should all work to uh, work with other people but yeah you'll in you know if you go by someone else's um uh agenda yeah it can really lead you down a path that's not for you yeah or you know and then like five years down the line or 50 years down the line you th- you can think back to that especially uh, i'm talking about you know folk, it, people in cults or people who kind of give their own freedom in a way to something else can you know you might look back and say no i i, I regret that or you know i wish it was done differently or you know i'm that kind of generalization i'm generalizing quite a bit but that's yeah <laughs> um no i agree and i feel like um like not to say that it was good because i mean it was horrible but the whole like having to be quarantined and having to spend so much time alone with myself and i'm sure other people kind of feel this way too but um are you still there yes i am okay sorry i the, it froze and i got scared um no okay but yeah um being alone with yourself for so long and getting to know yourself um but then while also being like secluded and not having to interact with other people and like kind of like act a certain way for other people I feel like that really helped me like figure out what I like like aesthetically and like just music wise and the way I want to present myself and who I am as a person and all that but then it also kind of made you see like how other people are too but anyway spending a lot of time with yourself I feel like is ultimately ultimately the best thing because it's like you don't have to fit into anybody else's like box because it's like you know this is who I am and I feel like it was nice to not have to follow that kind of you know yeah yeah and I think everyone you know should spend time with themselves it's kind of a rare thing depending on where you live Mm-hmm. You know, if you're in a large city, you always hear someone, something always. Um, and I mean, like you were getting at, I mean, it's uh, it's to be able to work with other people is important too. you know, like that's something I've had to learn. Like I spent a lot of time by myself, did everything, you know, with little help besides, you know, maybe from family or something. But but now I'm like in a way of life where I need, you know, I can't do it by myself. Like, I know myself now, you know, spending the time I need uh, my own thoughts and everything, kind of, so to speak. And then, you know, to, and then um, being able to really kick some ass with like-minded people is the next step, which I'm hoping to do with Crimson here. And so far, we're, we're, we got some interesting stuff in the works. Um, yeah, me too. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, for anyone who hasn't seen it, Kyron has a music video for her song Legs, which is on the EP Slipping Through. And uh, I think it's really interesting. I like the imagery. And you did that all by yourself, right? 
Um, well, I had my sister and my mom help me like film it, but okay. um, okay. some scenes I just propped up the camera. Sure. Um, That's why I was asking. There was, there was, it seemed like a very, it didn't seem like anyone was following you, you know, per se. It looked like you could have done it by yourself so you had you had some help and that's yeah. good um I, ha I have a few questions about that video so there's a there's there's a few shots of like a um storm drain okay okay where were those where the syringes were because there's a cut scene with this those are actually pens and then i realized they was oh. like oh oh dude, yeah hollywood <laughs> dude i know wow editing <laughs> No, those are those are just a bunch of like big pens or whatever the hell they're called. Yeah. Um, oh, so it wasn't meant to look like that at all. No, and I realized I was like that. That's kind of weird, like because that's not what the song has like really I, anything. I could have been coming where I was coming from with that. May have been the environment I've grown up in. <laughs> you know, like oh, <laughs> got edgy real quick. Like I I know what those are. <laughs> but uh, okay, so they're pens. Yep, I know. It's I ruined the the immerse whole. I don't know. Can't think of the word there, but well, what were you trying? Were you trying to say anything specific with that? Then the fact that they were pins. Um, I guess I just like the like the what are they called? Um, like litter because it's like yeah, prime and like you know gross feelings so it's like here's a here's gross visuals to fit this like crawling up your spine feeling when you think about certain things you know sure i mean how i interpreted it, what those were totally got that <laughs> i <laughs> totally got that from it um okay oh hey the doll is that an older doll is it like a older style doll or i think i got it at a thrift store um and I feel bad because when I bought it, the girl that was ringing me up, I told her that I was like, yeah, I'm going to like smash this apart for a music video. And she's just kind of looking at me like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was really excited about that. Because yeah, I actually, um, if I remember right, I like woke up in the middle of the night and I was like, it needs one more scene for the bridge. And this is what it's got to be. And I need it right now. I need a doll. So, I need to yeah. destroy a doll. Mm -hmm. Do you still have any of it? I actually don't because I convinced myself that it was cursed, so I threw it away. <laughs> um, but I do have a, like a baby doll head. Um, I don't think that one's cursed. Another doll you destroyed? Or... Well, it's um, I ordered it like from a this place that sells like pieces for like crafts and stuff. Okay. Um, so yeah. The coloring but... on his cheeks are like down here on the bottom of its face. I know, right? Like I got like this weird baby. like red paint on it. I'm really sad, um, but I don't really think you can really see it. So maybe uh, I that's... can, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. But yeah, yeah. I love like creepy baby doll stuff. Um, I'm looking like a creepy baby doll. That's definitely a vibe I like to give out sometimes. Um, okay. I yeah, like a baby. just to kind of be, I guess, feeling like you're trying to like fix something and it it's not. Or like you're trying your best but you know it's kind of like there's nothing really else i can do but i still want to like be there for that person you know okay yeah so that was what that was supposed to be that that th those shots specifically with the doll or the video mm -hmm. in, in its entire okay okay what, yeah what else can you say about the video mm -hmm. can come to mind or I think I originally wanted to make a music video for like Plague. So some of the ideas, or no, 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 Mirabed. It was Mirabed that I was going to make a music video for. So that's where like the looking into the mirror was from and like just kind of the whole like look. But I feel like like after it was done, it kind of had little pieces of like each song kind of, I guess, like visually, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah. So yeah, so some of it's kind of just like, trying to show the idea of the EP and what I want somebody to think of when they're listening to it. Um, but other ones are, I guess, like, here's me, here's the words. And I mean, it was like super just like I did it myself, you know, so it was kind of like not a lot you can do, but I definitely think the it's effective. Yeah, like the emotion kind of I feel like it comes out. Maybe it doesn't. Yeah. But no, I no, I see it for sure. It's very effective, you know. It's a it's a very DIY 
made video, I think you did pretty well, especially your first video. Thank I, you. I, I mean that, like you do, you do express the emotion. I think you're going for. I, th I think you're going for. Um. Uh. It looks like you had fun making it too, and that translates. Cool. Um. Yeah, I think my sister helped me film the part where I have the baby doll. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's like, you can sort of see that I was laughing at myself for a second. But yeah, yeah. Is yeah. That towards the end? Or... I think so. Okay. I was like, damn it. Can people see that? I don't know. But it was supposed to be sad. And then I kind of fucked it up. But you know, what? it's fine. Well, there's um, a lot of emotions going on, it seems like. So maybe just like. Snapped and I start laughing. I'm yeah, you had fun destroying the doll is maybe that's what translated that's not what i wanted but <laughs> hey i mean maybe this, somebody you, you know. know again it's i that was just at the that, that small part like i had to i didn't notice it i didn't notice that the first time i watched it so if that helps okay the laughing part it's definitely not what i wanted it like to be in you know i didn't want that to be in there but it was kind of like i don't know it was like sped up too so i was hoping like you, you couldn't really see but it was supposed to be like more sad um okay um well it, it was entertaining when i noticed it well you know that's what way. we aim for at the end of the day oh i mean you touched on this earlier i was i was talking about the uh, referring to the um the stars uh interview i mean you, you talked about your interest were shifting in your tastes and you were finding <laughs> what you wanted for your songs um how so uh, i mean you were saying earlier it was it seemed like a drastic shift from what you were growing up on to the, your industrial influences to now i mean can can we touch on that again um i would say i kind of actually went full circle more like because like when i was like a little kid i do definitely remember like hearing queens of the stone age and nine inch nails um but you know i was like Same. super tiny so it didn't really like stick but then senior year I decided to like go back to it for some reason I was just like oh I remember that one song let's check it out again um and then I was like I love this like this is like what I want to hear now um so I feel like it kind of just like went that direction and then like I told my dad like I'm getting to Nine Inch Nails and he was like oh you should try out ministry and skinny puppy and sure uh you know okay. all the industrial bands uh and so I would say it's kind of like kind of going back, but then also going even further now. Um, but yeah, definitely kind of always trying to find like something kind of new, but still kind of fitting into what I'm into at the time. Sure. Uh, what like artists and this could be music or someone who does physical art, like who's like who stands out to you right now? Like who's grabbing your attention? Um, I've been listening to a lot of Nights Are Ebb. They're really good. Um, what are they called? Nights Are Ebb. Nice. They're like EBM industrial stuff. Um, all the kind of doom metal-y stuff I was talking about. Um, what okay. else? For like my more noisy stuff, uh, I kind of have been listening to Throbbing Gristle and Einstrich and Neubatten. They're pretty good. Okay. Um, but yeah, I just honor like revolting cocks and uh, pig face. Um, everything <laughs> I just mentioned, all that good I've stuff. Never heard of pig face? Okay, I'll look that up too. Uh, What's a song? Okay, well, let's start with pig face. What's a song that would be good to introduce someone to that you thought was um, interesting? Well, on "Broken" by Nine Inch Nails, there's a cover of "Physical." and right or am i stupid or is it suck no it's suck i'm so stupid suck. oh really okay yeah and that's pig face um, oh okay so they've been yeah. around a while then yeah because like trent was in pig face for a minute um so you can start with that because it'll be familiar um but then i personally really like their song asshole that's my favorite and it has ogre on vocals um yeah <laughs> great names what was the yeah. first one you mentioned of the bands? Um, um, I think I said, did I say Knights or Ed? Yes. Knights or Ed, yeah. They're... What do you recommend from them? Oh, man, so good. Um, I've been listening to 
I'd say like my little group of songs that I've been repeating over and over again would probably be Kick It. Um, Hit You Back is pretty good. Down On Your Knees is good. Um, and probably I Give To You. Those are good. Those are all really good. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I've also been getting into like more goth music too um because i mean love the cure but i wanted to dive into that a little bit more so to christian death and oh right on yeah yeah like Christian, christian death. Death. what uh, do you think of uh goth good. trap like ghost um music. i personally don't really listen to it or like Not your i mean maybe i'm just like refuse to listen to like I don't know. I feel like that fusion of genres like can work, but I just don't really like. Hasn't caught you yet. No. Okay, but that's fine. Each to their own. I'm trying to remember. I went to Aftershock Festival in Sacramento two years. And I know, I'm trying to remember if it was one year that Horrors played there. Ooh. And that was good. I'm trying to remember if they played the same one that uh, Ghost Main did. That's the same one I saw Manson at and Rob Zombie. And I'm gonna look up that bill um, one of these days and share it with you because it was it was both both times I went was great were great. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, you were talking about how what you listened to as a kid or what was coming into your peripheral you know, growing up and you ended up listening to it down the line. I'm kind of going through that because growing up, my mom had, you know, had Nirvana's Nevermind, had Real Hot Chili Peppers, had a couple Rob Zombie um, solo albums. Um, She has, she has the Nine Inch Nails album that, that that's clo- that closures on. <laughs> um, mm. And uh, which I like Nine Inch Nails. I, I haven't like dove into them yet jeremy has told me more than i've ever you know in like the year i've known him than i have ever you know learned about you know uh before like i know i've seen trent Reznor in so many different places you know between like working with bands i like to um just being mentioned uh, or like his songs are in movies i like that kind of thing so you know um uh Stuff like that, and uh, not and like Johnny Cash, like later Johnny Cash when he was older and it was a lot darker. Mm. Um, and that back around, like I'm listening to those same albums, and I like like what what there's like some there's a lot of folk music coming out. Like I call it like modern, like postmodern folk. I don't know what to call it. It's like darker. Like one is uh, Amigo the Devil, and he, he just talks about like uh uh mental health in there he talks about uh just uh raw emotion um really really cool stuff um and uh you ever heard of timber timbre i have not okay timber timbre or canadian let's go i already like them yeah <laughs> Um, they're very polite. Anyway, um, it's timber as a tree falling and timbre as in the musical term. So oh, T-I-M-B-R-E. That's smart. Really like slow paced, moody. Music. Mm. Yeah, really cool. And um, one song I recommend of theirs, I might have to look it up. But uh, I, like like that I like that we're sharing up music here, sharing music here. For sure. No, I was gonna say I feel like I'm like blanking on all the stuff that I like right now. Like you know when you put on the spot and you're like, oh shit, I can't think of anything. Well, I'm really bad with that because my memory's a little weird. But also, <laughs> I mean, if there's too many, there's I know it's like I keep thinking like Boy Harcher's amazing, Youth Code's amazing. Um, I, I, I end up just going down the list in alphabetical order, and it's not good. Yeah. Um. I so for Timber Tambor, for anyone who's listening. Hope someone is. <laughs> um, 
uh black water or um demon hosts really good songs but yeah um that style is kind of uh linked to stuff i listened to when i was younger and i mean when i was in high school you mentioned you listened to a lot more of emo music and my no that was middle school middle gotcha, school gotcha oh yeah. right right okay so that makes sense because in my day we called it screamo Mm-hmm. post hardcore i think it's technically like pop pop it's a lot you know they they kind of a lot of them morph into the pop punk came in came back through like um uh too many bands uh um right blink 182s is, is is an example but like newer bands that went that way so many um they had the song downfall for us all a day to remember. Mm. They went from heavy to very pop punk within like like five years of me no like realizing they were a band. Or um Yeah, you know, what so yeah, middle school. What what were you listening to then? Oh god. Um <laughs> I would say this is like the introduction to me like liking the stuff that I do now. Like had it not been for this, I probably wouldn't be listening to whatever um but oh god my chemical romance fallout boy yep yep panic oh. this uh, yeah, yep. halsey which like you know they're they were good at the time but i just feel like that reminds me of when i was like in middle school and it's also like looking back on just it has just like a different vibe than what i look for in music now and i just you know sure i mean there's probably certain songs that still you know get get to you when you hear them oh for sure i mean i sometimes don't tell anyone but sometimes i will listen to um folly ado by follow boy just randomly because it's it's a good album um okay yeah no i um actually this is segue into one of my questions is what's some music that no one expects you to listen to you know um well first off like i also like fallout boy i like original fallout boy though when they were they, they had a band the new yeah. stuff i like that they make it themselves they're not outsourcing any producers for writing it mm. but it's like doesn't connect with me i like some parts of it though same thing with pancake at the disco i liked their first couple albums the newest stuff is cool in ways but it's just not yeah yeah no i i Agree. They don't expect me to listen to the gorillas. I love them because I grew up listening to death metal too, and some country, and etc. Everything I mentioned. So what's uh what's what's music someone doesn't expect you to listen to? I was thinking about this this morning because I was like, I know you were gonna say that. So, um, I'd say like my sister really likes Lady Gaga and I mean like honestly like if you get past like the singles like she actually has some really cool like synth moments and drums and yes <laughs> it's yeah. it's actually pretty like good um so I don't mind Lady Gaga like honestly she's she's really cool um and in general she's just like <clears throat> a really down-to-earth person um so yeah Lady Gaga is great um and uh I used to be like super <clears throat> into MGMT um and i kind of took a break from listening to that oh yeah we my friend group we listen we listen to them too much yeah them i mean they're good and like each album yes. so yeah but i still i definitely will go back to congratulations sometimes and uh, they're self-titled yep. and little dark age their newer one those are all really good albums um so yeah i still i still like mgmt um tammy impala I used to listen to them a little bit. Um, I'm not even sure if I said it right. But, yeah. Cool. Yeah, Tim. Oh, yeah. Um, I used to be super into the Strokes too, and um, I hear them a lot at work. And um, you my, know, like so. My buddy got me into them. Yeah. They're yeah, really, they're good. Yeah. Um, what you were saying about Lady Gaga. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, very, very. Uh, she's very effective. She has a great voice. I like, I like her music too. Like. Um, she's she's just a really good singer too. Um, same reason I like Adele. And how you describe liking Lady Gaga is what I think about like Miley Cyrus. Hmm. No, she kind of had her her moment like with um that new album she put out. I don't remember what it's called. But. She's she's on a 
she's on an upward slope right now. I think, I mean, all the bullshit of fame mm -hmm. kind of, you know, really diluted how good she really is, I think, a little bit to me. But right now, I think she's just kicking so much ass. And her covers are my favorite thing. Yeah, like a bunch of covers. And I was like, oh, these are actually pretty cool. Right. Who would have thought Miley Cyrus doing a cover of The Cure or... Oh. Right. She, she she was at the she was at the ceremony for um mm, the guy who was in audio slip Chris Cornell. Mm, yeah. Yeah, she performed there at the um or ceremony for him and she did um I think it was an audio slave song. I I check anyone who knows what I'm talking about. They were just making fun of me right now. But um, if anyone gets a chance, look up Miley Cyrus at the Chris Cornell ceremony. Um, anyway, we could talk about this for a while. <laughs> uh, let's get back to you, though. Um, hi. Uh, so, yeah, that was a good examples of songs someone might not expect either of us to listen to. Oh, we can... Uh, yeah, you know, I almost I almost forgot. So slipping through Kyron's EP. Um uh also has a remix album. It does. Yeah. Um produced co-produced by this guy. One and only. Yep. What a guy. Um what a, what a man. Yeah, Jeremy Kramer of Wormhead. I love him, he loves me. Um yeah. You want to, let's talk about that like when did that come out because i didn't know that existed until he told me randomly um i was like oh wow huh. when did that come out because like obviously i released the ep first and then um in march so that was like january for very much so that was like two months after or something like that um yeah it was kind of just like I think we were both, I mean, we're both huge Nine Inch Nails fans, so. Yeah. Uh, we were, <laughs> I think we were inspired by um, the whole broken fix moment, you know, um, and how there's, like, a million different versions of, like, Closer and stuff, um, and I think we kind of had that in mind while we were um, kind of collaborating on the remixes, because he would, like, he would do it, and then he'd send it to me, and he'd be like, what do you think, and I'd be like, oh, this is cool, this filter's a little weird at this one spot, though, or, like, whatever, you know, um, Oh, that yeah, yeah. No, it's a it's a great idea because everyone, not everyone, it, people like remixes. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's like endless amounts of artists I like that someone does a remix for them. So mm -hmm. the fact that you can actually have input on on the re, on a remix uh, of the whole thing is cool, and I think it's good content. Um, yeah, it was it was really fun to um to collaborate on, but. I was actually, I was scared when I put it out, or I guess we put it out, uh, because um, I was like, oh, these are so much better than the original, and people are going to listen to the remixes instead, and they're going to be like, <laughs> man, Karen sucks at writing music, guys, Oof. you know, <laughs> so <laughs> that, was, that was a little mini fear of mine. Um, um, I mean, if it makes you feel better, people listen to whatever catches them, and mm -hmm. You know, if it wasn't off the original EP, if it was on the remix thing, that gets someone interested to listen to the other songs. For sure, yeah. That's how that. I've experienced it. Like I've, you know, I've, um, I've discovered bands through their remixes because it's just what kind of comes in the peripheral the first time. I mean, I gotta mention something when I was on Spotify trying to look up you because I was trying to review stuff for this interview. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a song from your ep then a one of the other ones and then a remix from the other one hmm. and then uh it was funny because it was a bunch of like pop songs in between your songs so it was <laughs> like uh who's the redheaded english guy uh ed sheeran yeah ed sheeran my we go way back yeah yeah well, he was <laughs> on he was on the playlist Oh my god that's weird i don't know I, may, I was gonna say maybe you should look into that see if you can like designate uh settings so you know bands that are more like you because the whole time was either you ed sheeran 
or some random pop songs. That's weird. Maybe it's just kind of like they don't know where to put me because like I don't really have there's probably not enough like information to say who else is similar to my stuff. <clears throat> so that's probably what it was. Well, I believe they give you like Spotify gives you a list of like settings to do to get that figured out. <laughs> um I mean also uh yeah, shout out to Spotify. I was really holding out not using them but then i did and their playlists are absolutely incredible like i always i listen i hear new songs i like songs that follow each other are good but back to you (laughs) hi um yeah the remix album i thought was really cool and uh guys put some work into it sounds like the fact that you're going back and forth you know figuring out what you know, he, he did that. He, that worked with the song. Um, yeah, I didn't, I, I wasn't sure if he just kind of made them and then said, you know, Oh, hey, here, here. <laughs> well, what yeah, up, I mean, what comes to mind? he kind of just was like, here, send me the stems. And then he would just like, send me all the stuff. And it was like, I didn't really know where the songs were going to go until he sent me what he had made kind of, um, but yeah, it was it was cool because some of them were a little bit more dancey and then some of them were a lot more like atmospheric. And I thought that was really interesting because I'm like, I don't know. I don't know where this song could like what it could turn into. So it was interesting. Um, but it was also fun to think about the names of the remixes because we kind of um, we like talked about that together. Um, and it was fun to like pick apart like lyrics and turn them into titles and stuff. Yeah. I liked how he... Um where he put in some of your vocal lines when there would be an instrumental section. Mm-hmm. Then like, like for, um, for legs, some of your more like parts where you come in when you're a lot, you have a lot more emotion and maybe some like, like umph and anger almost. He mm-hmm. placed those really well. So it was just like, you know, that was, I, I, I think it was good that it was Jeremy who made those. Cause yeah, I feel like we definitely have like similar, visions for where music's supposed to go so i feel like it definitely was a good good combo yeah i liked i really liked the fact that you 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 guys were able to go back and forth on making sure you kyron yourself liked the the how the remixes were going you know that's not always done i mean it is but it shows when it is you know you know actually having the artist input I, I think. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Are you thinking about what you're going to do for the anniversary of this release? Now that we're, we were talking about it. I literally, I didn't even like realize that until just now. I was like, oh shit. Right. Month. Um, I don't know. Um, I do want to say that I picked 10 on purpose because that's my favorite number, like 10 or like 101. Fun little fact, so. Um, so yeah, like December 10th. Um, gotcha. yeah, I don't know. I'll probably just like, just kind of celebrate to remind myself. And, yeah, yeah post something be like, hey, remember, remember this? Go listen to it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, well, we'll definitely, you know, Crimson, my whole team, my Jeremy, whole team. my whole team, <laughs> um, we'll definitely like share it. And, you know, we'll figure something out, you know? I was thinking that too. Like, huh. like there's a, uh, there's an artist I'm producing right now. His name is D'Artagnan from Chico, California. We were going to make some pins for him too, and we will. But he's releasing an album soon. And uh, um, just, just a plug there. And, yeah, we were, we were thinking about that. It was like, I have to shop these companies and... I need them to send me like a sample because this what if like I give them something like for the pins and like the, the colors are all off, you know? Mm. Yeah. We might have to edit this part out. I'm kind of digressing. But, I don't I don't care. <laughs> it's cool to talk about, you know, give other people some attention. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's what I was kind of going for there. Yeah. I'll check them out. Cool. Once he puts stuff out. Yes, I, yeah, we, I play drums on it, and Jeremy plays some guitar and bass on a couple of the songs. 
It's good. Cool. And I'll get into that more because this is the, this is actually the first mentioning of that project. Has he put anything out before? Or he has some singles on Spotify. I'll send you some links. Yeah, yeah, I want to check him out. Um, yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll share ideas uh about what like maybe what you do for your the anniversary of slipping through. Um, but uh oh, here's some random questions. I kind of say, what's the most Arizona thing about you? Like, do you wear turquoise Good ever? Yeah. Do I what? You wear tur- turquoise or stuff like that? What's like, that's what comes to mind. Like the stone? Yeah, yeah. Because that's oh. everywhere in Arizona. No, that's true. But I, uh, a lot of people at work wear rings like that because um, there's a guy that makes rings. Um, and so I see that like a lot. Um, I don't know. What is the most Arizona thing about me? Probably the fact that I get like really cold when it's like only 70 degrees out. That's probably, yeah. Which is funny because I'm from Ohio. So you would think I'm like used to snow and shit, but nope. I have lost my ability to maintain my body warmth. I hear you. Um, I'm so used to like sweating my balls off. You know what I mean? Like during summer. So it's like, sure. yeah. Yeah. Only time I go to Arizona is during like February or March. Because it gets yeah. hot here in my county, mm-hmm. um, Lake County, um, but nothing like Arizona in the summer. No, it's so you it's can't a even cold go. day. Yeah, no, it's beautiful there though in the desert. I love the it can't be. Yeah, it can. I'm definitely. I feel like my my heart is still a little bit more in Ohio. I definitely like good foresty looking stuff, but okay, you know, it can it can be pretty sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It gets cold too. I heard that. <laughs> to me, although to other people, they're probably like, "I swim in this weather." You know what I mean? Like, sure. Yeah. Um, how long did you live in Ohio for? Um, I think I moved. I moved when I was really young because I started elementary school in Arizona. Um, but I want to say probably like four or five, probably four. So you start, don't you start kindergarten when you're five? So okay. Yeah. yeah, I lived in the Bay Area until I was six years old. Then I moved here. Hmm. That's my story. I like it. It ends right there. <laughs> <laughs> this is it happening right here. Um, my life. Beginning. Uh, yep. And it's gonna keep, it's gonna keep going on. Just just wait. Check my Instagram. I'm interesting. I swear. <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> the facade, though. Anyway, um, it's the mask that we're talking about with Instagram. Yep. Oh, quick r- rant. A quick one. You know, I found out Instagram does with hmm. their algorithm. They'll target uh, young girls and, that, and their filters will be slightly on or off by like a small percentage to make you feel more insecure. That's weird. So this, they call it the ugly filter tool. Huh. And it'll turn it on just slightly. So when you see yourself on the camera, you, yep. That's weird. It's it's messed up. I feel like not to be like, oh my God, I like don't use filters. But like, I normally just use ones I that. I use filters. <laughs> <laughs> use well, I usually now. use ones that like affect like the colors rather than like the way my face looks. So I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm still subjected to that, but. I hear you. It, sometimes it can create a really cool effect. Like with my photos on my Instagram, it's I almost none of them have filters on them, but apparently they do a small even when amount, you post no stuff, what. huh? Even when you post things, I thought you were talking about just the stories. Stories and posts, yeah. Weird. Yeah. That's um, weird. Totally. Um, like most of my pictures on my Instagram are have no filters, but you know I'll put a little bit if I like can't bring out the green in some of my my plant photos. But it's like ever so slight because it can be really cool sometimes. Um, to yeah, I like- it. You know, it's a specific thing. Um, uh, sorry, tangents. No, I'm, now I want to look for that next time I post a picture of myself. I'm gonna screenshot it off of Instagram and compare it to the original and see if it's changed. Cause that's weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah see what you can figure out. Cause I heard that secondhand, and it was like an official story that came out that they the algorithm messes with photos a tiny bit i don't even think it's on a setting like on our filter settings you know we can control that 
apparently it's on a little bit and they specifically target certain individuals just to get you to use the app more i don't know it's it's some evil stuff i don't know <laughs> yeah that's weird uh, looking through these questions i like the little surprise ones mm. you actually answered questions just speaking that i didn't even ask you yet you know probably kind of like on my mind because i read them like read through them this morning so oh right you had some of them yes yeah. okay right i gave them all to you <laughs> yeah I, okay. no i'm glad you did because I, I like to be prepared for stuff but um yes I think then that's... the then we start and my brain is just like so oh no you're doing great that's i was worried about that for myself again everyone this is the first crimson media group interview so i'm your little doing pretty good i think yeah um who's uh let's go back to that um let's go back to artists that like have your attention right now like actual like physical like artists like paintings physical and, art yeah like okay. art, uh, paintings drawings anything <laughs> like that who's like who's, is there anyone that like has your attention right now i would say oliver mcintosh he's like super talented he's like he does like snakes a lot and snakes are really really hard to draw properly i had no idea i would okay Cool. Yeah, because it's like you have to pay attention to like the muscles and the bone structure and where the spine is in uh, comparison to like the body or the, the stomach. And yeah, what I've noticed about snakes too, um, you know, they can move every little section of them. So light hits them. As light hits them, they can, you know, move one edge of themselves away or forward. You know what I mean? So it, the whole, you know, they, it, the snake could be straight, but it's slightly that and so it, it looks different throughout its whole body you know that's what comes to mind yeah they're weird they're super complex and there's like so many weird rules like um the belly scales are supposed to point towards the tail along with all the other like the body scales and um that's a like it's like a you know set size throughout but it gets smaller by the tail <clears throat> and by the head but like it looks off if you get it even just a little wrong yeah this is another of the the one tattoo artist that i was talking about wow yeah so yeah all of her magic is really good um, um let me grab something because oh wait can i uh, wait what were you gonna say uh i just have to go right over there okay. what were you gonna say i was gonna say like a another physical artist that i love um his name is paul joseph vogler and his stuff is like amazing he does like a lot of um like unsettling but still cool <laughs> okay like stuff like this like ah and that's yeah like, and that is that digital or did he draw that um physically okay. okay yeah this is another like a gas mask kind of thing um, oh damn yeah, yeah love his stuff that's definitely i totally want to try to do something similar to the kind of things he does okay w one moment let me grab something um, yeah you go do that i'm sorry i kept you waiting the low crimson media watchers we're alone now um like, so i got these it's a sailor jerry oh nice I've got a few of them. They came with, you know, they came like through bottles. I didn't get the bottles, but they, these, um, I guess they're not lithographs. Maybe they are. But yeah, the, that style, the old school tattoos. Just... Is that like an original? No, no. It, it, they, they remade these hmm. and put them in like so many different. Um, so they had like bottles of Sailor Jerry and they had like these containers. So you get a poster and a bottle in there. Oh, uh, okay, like, okay. They didn't do it for very long. So but it, it's just really cool. And we were talking about tattoos. So no, yeah, that's, that's really cool. He's like the, like, I feel like tattoo artists like pray to him every night. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. No, he was, he was, he's been, 
his artwork's been around a while and i forget that style of tattoos like the almost the sailor the, the original kind of american classic tattoo american traditional yeah traditional thank you okay i've heard it before but yeah um which i would i do want to get some tattoos like that like you have some you have some kind of like that on your page yeah i Similar i kind of try to do like a combination of kind of traditional and like maybe like kind of like black work illustrative kind of thing um but as i'm like learning i'm like I'm those are designed now i'm starting to like figure out how things actually work sure yeah um just want to like this is one of Kyron's, which I can always put it on the screen for a better image, but I really like that. Yeah. Was that for the, was that one for the shop or for just you or? Um, I think that one ended up just being practice because I don't think I actually ended up putting it in my portfolio. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of art that I've made that I haven't posted um okay you got back you got back content i know i need to, i need to post that stuff um yeah definitely i made these little mods uh, i like the all right yeah um like, and I, I don't think i posted that and oh i made this is dumb because they're inspired by my songs on my ep but i guess this is like a good place to show it off but yeah i made a little flash sheet based on it um those would be really cool stickers or enamel pins, especially if you're thinking they were part of your songs. Yeah, I could make the little baby head one. I would love that. That would be cool. Or the, that, did you make the baby head from like the one you showed me a minute ago? No, but um, okay. it does look similar. I was thinking about that because I thought that for a second. I was like, did I use that one as reference? No, I found it online. Gotcha. The cheeks made me think about that. Yeah, it's like kind of supposed to be like vintage looking. Well, that's why I asked initially um, if it was an older doll, because on uh, between you and me and everyone listening to this, um, as a kid, I was super scared of dolls. Oh, hello. Grandma had dolls like at her house, and um, my mom was like, "Yeah, I never liked them. They're scary, you know." And um, I was like, "Yeah, they're kind of freaky." But now I, it's like weird because if there's like a doll that I get secondhand, I'm going to be like, this shit's haunted. I don't want it in my house. You know what I mean? Um, but I do, I love looking at them. So maybe, I don't know. You appreciate them. Yeah. I mean, craftsmanship yeah. goes into them. Have, but uh, um, you ever seen those Victorian era ones that are like four feet tall? That's kind of what it looked like, like the ones that my grandma had, because they were like big, but I don't know how, like, if gotcha. they actually were. Right. I mean, I remember in where I used to live in San Leandro, there was a park and this park used to be uh, someone's property. So in the middle of it, it's a very old house, like a Victorian age house. And our school got to go into it for a tour and in their kids room. And, and these were very ritzy people. They were wealthy. So this kid had a lot of dolls and some were taller than me. And I was scared of the movie Chucky growing up really bad. oh my god that movie scarred me so bad i watched that and then yeah. i go right to a field trip as a kid and i'm just like oh, damn. no kill me. <laughs> i i know it's not real but why is it why couldn't it happen that's what that's what i that's like my where i was i didn't understand as a kid and why i was scared of horror movies mm -hmm. was you can't tell me why this couldn't happen because we go to church <laughs> and exactly i mean this stuff's supposed to be real <laughs> yeah you know can i see what i'm coming from from there yeah, um no. but I, I appreciate them now in the craftsmanship and i watch chucky movies just because like i like to overcome my fears you know i should i should watch it now that i like when um it's funny it's funny yeah. and scary no i know which is like ironic because like when you're a little kid you don't see that yeah, because you yeah, don't get the fresh. joke. It's fresh as a kid. Is We're, there a uh, scene where he's like in an air vent? Because I remember after watching that movie, I was terrified of air vents forever. Sure, I was afraid of water because of Friday the 13th and Jaws. Like, I live by a lake, so I'd go swimming and try to go deep. You're like, wait, some inspired those movies. <laughs> <laughs> away right, from yeah, that. that's funny. I always wanted to swim deeper because, like, the 
our lake isn't that deep, but it's it can get dark because it can be really thick. What's in the water? It was mm-hmm. kind of it's kind of nice to look at just like the depth, the sheer depth of darkness in a lake. Yeah. But then you know. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, no, I that reminds me of Lake Erie because that was like near where. Um, no, that's a lake. Oh yeah. And I'm almost positive people have been found dead in it before. So I just feel like it has like a similar energy as what we're talking about right now. Sure. Um, oh, wait, can I back back to something real quick? Mm, I'll allow it. Okay. Victorian you, stuff? Wait, I lost you there for a second. In things? Say it again. <laughs> Victorian. Okay, I got you. You were yeah. getting out. Okay um victorian like era stuff i love like there's dresses that i bought because i thought they looked like victorian stuff um um but i wanted to say just real quick that i'm getting this book and it's like what is it it's like now i need to figure out what it's called but it's basically like victorian medical practices and there's like photos and stuff it is called the butchering art so yeah all the unsafe practices I used to have and how it was kind of kind of brutal. I'm gotcha. excited to read about it. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Right on. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll try to remember to look that up when I'm editing this. Um, yeah, I have a lot of books, so I'm too many. I it's, see it's a, a book. problem. Yeah. <laughs> Let me show you two books I've been reading. Okay. So we have The Picture of Dorian Gray, which is really oh, okay. good. And yeah, it's probably my favorite that. book. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I started Dracula because, yeah. I have, a um, ver- I have the version of the same book. Uh, it's the like Frankenstein this, version. This one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it picks up after the first half i mean there's i think i think the whole thing's pretty pretty decent the only part i had trouble reading was you know the anyone who doesn't know um dracula is set up in different in separate little journal entries or letters or a few newspaper articles too that's how it's written in the format and they use uh it's pretty understandable english but there's a few parts where they're talking about you know some person who's talking is like an average Englishman back in the 1800s. So they're using kind of broken English. Mm, yeah. You know, like, you know, the average, the average people. Um, or lack of a better term, but anyway, um, yeah, that's the only part because you had to like really read it. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I recommend the Frankenstein version of that. Of, I mean, that, that printing of that book. Uh, mm-hmm. that the books. yeah you ever read frankenstein i did yeah in school and um i don't quite remember the whole thing because it was like a while ago but um i don't think i like i don't think i hated it you know it's like hard to enjoy books when you're constantly like being quizzed on it i think which is like why i didn't really like reading for a while and then i read the picture of dorian gray and i was like oh shit maybe this is kind of fun um yeah yeah it's what, yeah, what intrigues you yeah. Mm. Did they assign you Frankenstein in school or are they like, yeah, oh, that's, that's pretty cool to me. We didn't get that. We had so many books in like this old hallway that they used to give out for us to read in high school, mm-hmm. but they would always give us like these state textbooks that had like shorter versions of stories and they were yeah. usually pretty crappy. Yeah. I had to do that too. I feel like, um, I want to like read more Edgar Allan Poe but there were definitely some poems we had to like dissect in class for Edgar Allan Poe and I was like man this is making it not as fun as it probably could be because I feel like sometimes you just got to take things like as they are and like apply it to you but you don't have to like analyze every single word and I feel like they make you do that in school and it's just like kind of takes the the like enthusiasm out of it yeah um especially when maybe not everyone in the classroom is on the same page with liking it mm-hmm. I, like that can discourage me from diving into something especially if it didn't like grab me in the beginning i'm trying to see over my bookcase like, uh, 
but Dorian Gray, that's one I haven't read that kind of goes in line with like Dracula and Frankenstein and Dark Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Oh, I loved that book. I don't remember like when I read it, but I know I did. I loved it. Yeah, I've been wanting to read my Silence of the Lambs lately. Dude, I need to like read it because like the movie is fantastic. It's like probably one of my favorite movies. Um, okay. But yeah, I need to read that. You know, it wasn't like not even five years ago that I saw the movie uncensored because I've only ever seen it on TV. Mm. So there's parts they don't show you on TV. You know, like when he's walk when she, when uh, Clarice is walking down the uh, um, the cell hallway for the first time, mm. and then the one guy that's like not too far away from Doctor Lecter is <laughs> like, ah, mm-hmm. it wasn't cool. It wasn't no. cool at all. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> what I thought was funny uh, is at um the end with the face. They didn't show all that. I had to insinuate that that he was wearing a face mask. That's like like the big plot point. Well, yeah, they they kind of translated it through the, how they edited it for t- for TV. Mm. But you don't they didn't really see, they didn't really show you everything. So that part was always weird to me until I saw it, you know, unrated. Yeah. What were you gonna That's- say, sorry? um what was i gonna say um oh um i was watching this one show called scream queens and it's like it's kind of like makes fun of like horror movies and tv shows in general like i don't know it's it's really funny but there was this one scene that was kind of trying to like like have a nod towards silence of the lambs and they kind of recreated the whole like walking through and then i think she got spat on or something oh okay that's a lot that's less horrible yeah it might have actually been like something even more dumb like whipped cream because it's like making fun of like like prissy girls that like like you know what i mean um anyway it was really funny and i was like oh my god this is supposed to be silence of the lambs because then they kept going oh the one girl was like in really thing Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i don't know it was it was funny it just reminded me of that right uh, on. special that i got the reference <laughs> um for those who haven't seen the signs of the lambs um yeah exactly. yeah hope you watch it and you'll know exactly what we're talking about um it's like it, there's a lot of there's a lot of serious scenes in that movie very serious mm-hmm. movie <laughs> um yeah, no spoilers or anything, but uh, kind of with the face part. Well, yeah, but that might get someone to watch it. I don't know. True, true. Yeah. I mean, you don't know who's wearing it or what it's from. Actually, I think I said who. I think I said who. Just leave it out. Yeah, he gets away. <laughs> well, <don't... laughs> Guys, so Hannibal Lecter actually. It's really good, though. They gotta find out how he gets away. That's true. That's I'm. I'd wonder that if I haven't seen it. <laughs> um. Okay, back to you. Back to me. Hi. Um. How long do you have on your um tattoo? Uh. What's the word? Apprenticeship. Apprenticeship. Thank you. Can you talk? Um, how much can you talk about that? By the way, I'm kind of like relearning how to draw, and it's really weird because it. It's like I thought I knew how to like make art and stuff. And then they tell me like certain techniques and how certain things should look for a tattoo. And it's like, sure. damn, that's not what I would have thought to do. Um, and yeah, like I kind of took like a like a long break from art because like, like my hand was like kind of getting really tired and I was like worried about it. So yeah. Yeah, it's good to take breaks. All right. Um uh, movies that make you cry. <laughs> I'll tell you the movies that make me cry, but first, you gotta go. Um, (laughs) This is gonna sound so stupid, because I can't think of anything else, but I watched fucking the the Dory movie, like the the fish, and I was like... Everyone cries at Pixar movies. I felt that. I was like, I'm trying my best once again, and I'm like, you know, it's hard. Um, story yeah that's one that makes me cry that's kind of funny like that um because uh, i feel like people. i don't really, huh? i feel like i don't normally like really cry at movies so oh i do yeah oh i cry like crazy um uh the one 
with Tom Hanks, Forrest Gump. I've never seen that. So maybe I should, and then maybe I'll cry. Oh, yeah, you, it's going to happen. Or um, what's the one with Brad Pitt where he ages backwards? It's really good. Wow. Uh, Let me see if I can find it. Google's good at that. It was just the description I gave. Will come Tom up. Hanks ages backwards. No, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt ages backwards. Oh, sorry. Benjamin Wrong. Button. Benjamin Button? Yeah. No, the... Oh, wait. Is that the movie? Did you figure it out? Yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. Tom Hanks. Sorry, I have a... I think I was thinking about this joke that I say. It's an inside joke. Never mind. Oh, okay. Like, my brain went to that. Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, Benjamin Button. Have you, you haven't seen that one? No. Oh, yeah. So he ages backwards. He's born old. That's really it. That's all I can say. It's they do it really well. The, his transition from his older self, where he's really a baby, to his old self. But he's he becomes younger. You'll see. It's really. Uh, um. I am sounds interesting. Yeah, have you seen I Am Legend? I've heard of it. I I'm like not a huge like movie watcher, so oh no worries. Yeah, most of these movies I'm talking about, I've maybe watched so many times and put mm -hmm. them on the shelf because I can't. I don't want to cry again. Yeah, yeah like, that's funny. Or um, what's another one? What I mean, yeah, one more movie. That, these get you emotional. You, the Crow. <laughs> I was that's funny because that's my other favorite movie yeah I mean you probably don't cry during the crow but no but I mean like I've like I'm sensitive to like sexual assault like in movies and stuff like not like for any particular like reason or anything I just it just is very pleasant to see well, um, that's why that movie is effective because everyone kind of uh, everyone kind of like agrees that's not good and, yeah, yeah and so i you know good for him to fucking get revenge and kill all those people um i was actually the crow for halloween did you know that yeah i saw that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. on kyron's instagram there's a photo of her as the crow pull it up because it needs to be because i worked really hard on that yeah i didn't dress up this year i last year last year i, I really wanted to and you know there was no opportunity to go out and do anything Mm. Um, oh yeah yeah yeah. but i don't know i it just didn't feel like it this year because last year i did the misfits video and that i wish oh, I, yeah. I wish i could have just kept that makeup on that's me yeah. i want i don't want there to be a reflection uh there you go there you go cool it's me did um you do that yourself yeah cool. my dad helped me with the with the like tape and stuff you know oh wow. uh, family goals right there um yeah, it was really fun. I was really proud of it. Um, and it was the first time actually going to like a Halloween party because I think like the only other time I've went to a Halloween party was when I was like in elementary school. Um, and I've always wanted to like go to another one and like actually like, you know, party with the cool kids, you know. Um, but, yeah, yeah. you know, one, not one that party, cool, with, believe me. I I was gonna say, one party with <laughs> people my age is enough. Uh, I think I'm good. Um, yeah. It was, it was interesting because <laughs> it's funny to see like what everybody dresses up as and I'm just this fucking like girl wrapped in duct tape in the corner with clown makeup on. <laughs> I was the only one wearing a mask too so I'm just like you know. Oh yeah I I've been to a Halloween party where I was the only one dressed up pretty much. That What? That's stupid. Like it's Halloween. Oh, no, how, how do you think I felt? <laughs> you should have felt proud because it's like. I, I was I was but you know at first you're like oh really guys? Halloween party, huh? We could have just had this tomorrow. <laughs> it was a Saturday, too. Um, you ever seen Wilfred? No. Okay, you ever heard of it? No. <laughs> so it's Elijah Wood, and he's imagining this British guy in a dog costume. I was the guy in the dog costume. Anyway, look. No, great. actually, I think I have heard of that because yeah. that sounds familiar. Yeah, it was but great. I've never. All, all, for makeup, all I had to do was like make my nose like a little browner. You know? mm -hmm. Just right here, a dot. Yeah, I think one other person had a costume on. You know who you are. Shout out to whoever that was. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So you had a good time on Halloween? Yeah, it was um, it was scary because I'm still super careful with like COVID. So I was kind of freaking out the whole time. Like if there was a big group of people, I would kind of go into a different room. Um, but it was fun. And um, my friends threw it at their new apartment. Um, shout out to Sam and all the other peoples. Um, yeah, it was fun. Um, but yeah, it was a good time. Right on. Nobody knew who I was, but I was expecting that. <laughs> Um, there was a guy in No one a... knew who he was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, what's the, like, it's the pink bunny onesie from that one movie. I think it's, like, a Christmas movie. Oh, A Christmas Story. Yeah. Yeah, there I, was some... yeah I, I watch that every year. Yeah. yeah. Somebody was dressed up as that. That was the only costume oh, I really... Awesome. I should do that. There's a sexy nun. Can't go wrong with that. Um... I should I should dress up as that too. Yeah. Dude, new costume again. So wait, sexy nun? That was somebody was there as that, yes. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. That sounds like a like fun though. Yeah. Like I haven't been around a large group of my friends in a while. Like maybe three, four at a time. Yeah. But uh, it's okay. It's okay. It's things are working out that way, again. Um, let's go back to you with your music for a second, and then we'll we'll find a way out of here. <laughs> um, so you're uh you're working on songs in your own own pace right now. Um, how how do you how do you this is a broad question. How do you know? when a song is done like hmm. you just is it done done or is it like with some painters where you're like oh, i could have put a little more here but i was it's it's definitely like that okay yeah um because even with like slipping through like at the time i was i mean i'm still really proud of it but um at the time i thought it sounded you know i was like you know this is i did it myself you know i'm proud of it it's good um, but then like now I'm like looking back I'm like oh god I mixed that really really bad I wish I would have had more like bass I don't know what I was doing I was trying to like not have it like peak and stuff sure. um low end is difficult with mixing if you don't have it the right stuff like literally like um I mean you can hear your low end as you as you've written it but how it can respond in other rooms someone listening to it that's what that's where like like treated rooms stuff like that kind of plays into it otherwise you don't need it for writing mm -hmm. obviously you know but um yeah I think I'm gonna have um either I mean if do you like master and mix stuff I don't master I mix music uh, I could totally like uh kind of give you my feedback um with your next you know the next release and stuff yeah because I was thinking of having Jeremy mess with the stuff after I'm done with it I'll like send everything to him um, well he'll likely come here we've been working at my house okay well yeah you're both welcome to work on it if you want if you want to give me any feedback because yeah I, I was really sad uh thinking about like damn this could have sounded better but there's not really anything I can do now unless I like release a remaster but that's gonna make me feel stupid because I'm like look at me I'm so special here's my remastered EP you know um, well, yeah, well you know maybe time will go by because that takes time to do correctly so you know the time to other stuff because again i like i think i think your music's very effective it's i think it's good I, i'm amazed that you wrote all of it by yourself you. you know that's that takes that takes focus initiative etc okay so yeah i like it and yeah when uh yeah i know jeremy will have any problem with us like giving you feedback um mastering though i mean i think it's important too to do that i mean uh and i'd go to a professional because i i don't mess with mastering because I, I think that you need a treated room and someone who knows what they're doing and so i i don't do it myself but in the grand scheme of it it's just making something louder and it, there's more nuance to it than that and i'm sorry for anyone who masters but uh 
Kyron needs someone to master her music, so. Dude, for real. I know, it's like, because it's like, I want to do it myself so I can feel proud of it, but it's also like, I need somebody else that actually knows what they're doing. But then if you want someone else, it requires, like, money, so it's like, because, yeah. you know, I'm sure it gets really expensive. Sure. Um, well, you're, well, you know, you, again, your the way your stuff came out was very effective. I mean, um, overall loudness, good, you know. Um, but, you know, we'll get to that when it comes that when it comes down to it, you know, um, but uh, when it needs to be mastered, I mean, and like, so it's just like focus on your writing, you know, that's like, those are details that you might sometimes not even necessary. Mm-hmm. It is, but it isn't. Sorry for anyone who masters. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, just focus on your writing because, yeah, you're doing that well, so. Well, thank you. Yeah um you need to write more it's just hard when you know you gotta dedicate time to certain things and um it's hard to write something after like going back to it too many times because I feel like that's kind of how I'm with how I am with this one song um but I'm like determined to make it into something because I love the lyrics so much I'm like really proud of the the writing on that part Mm -hmm. um but yeah that's kind of not the only thing I have because I have little things um but I definitely want to try to get that started I've tried starting it and then I'm like ew that's bad and I like get rid of that and I gotta start over you know um well it sounds like the process that's something you have to do you'll figure it out yeah I mean mean, I wrote it like a while ago and so I feel like what I originally kind of wrote it about like isn't super relevant anymore but I feel like it kind of keeps like coming into my mind and um I'll be like, well, this kind of could be related to this certain thing I'm thinking about at this moment. Um, so it kind of, I feel like it's slowly kind of taking it like a new shape, I guess, which I actually like it more that way. Okay. Well, that's, that's the path you got to go with then the fact that you like what it's turning into makes sense to me. Um, uh, oh, with your, last ep uh slipping through um where one, uh, no. where did that what song did that that's is there a specific song that started with yeah i wrote mirror bed like i started writing it like a year before i started writing all the other songs um, which is funny because i actually started writing that in my car at school like in the parking lot it's very very high school oriented which like suits it really well because that's you know, the period of time I wrote it in. But anyway, yeah, Mirror Bed. Um, have had, had that one for a really, really long time. And it definitely took on a lot of different, like, shapes as it was going. Like, it started off, it started off with this, like, weird synth that I found that sounded like, like a demon laughing, kind of. But, like, it's, uh, I didn't really like where that was going. So then I found, like, <laughs> right, like, his, okay. like, witchy kind of girl cackling to be like like more of a literal laughing sound and then I was like no I don't like that either and then I ended up completely getting rid of that and I it starts with I think like a static noise now I think right I don't know it's been been a while it's funny because like I think so I just uh I have to listen to it again but I was listening to I was listening to that one earlier I'm pretty sure there is that one is like I'm surprised that I don't really feel too weird about that one being out because that one's like super personal to me um but yeah down to the world and right you gotta you gotta, you gotta be honest with music yeah and i feel That's like that nice. one is, you know, people like that yeah because i feel like there's certain things that multiple people write about and one of those topics is like definitely like love and that's like overdone but then there's like certain things like depression you know like you know good to bring attention to that but i feel like there's like just little smaller things that need to have more you know, because then you're going to feel less alone, like listening to this song that's about the thing that you're struggling with. So, yeah, 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 yeah I completely uh, agree. I mean, um, yeah, static. I was like, well, how does that one start? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, right now, um, I mean, that's this is how I see it, and I've heard other people see it. Um, last year and a half, um, maybe last six years, really, everyone's very angry, or you, at least that's the general way the world wants us to see anyway people are emotional last year and a half people were kind of closed off from each other in a way 
Mm-hmm. So I think I think it's like a repeat of like the transition from the 80s to the grunge era where people want to people want music that talks more about how they're really feeling. Yeah, and actually that's a really good like point. I didn't think that. Yeah, that was the narrative um a lot of like when I've seen some interviews with, you know, Nirvana's mem- band members or Pearl Jam's band members, they'll talk about that like you know, they liked 80s music, but it was all like lack of a better term, a facade of party and good times and a lot of pop pop culture stuff. They're like, like I want something to scream to instead. Right, kind of right. I, yeah, yeah I, I grew up in a state that is always rainy, you know, like the Pacific Northwest. Like, I didn't. I mean, like, the grunge bands. Right, right, I grew right. up in a very eerie place, so, like, a lot of, a lot of different kind of feelings, a whole, whole different perspective, and, pe- you know, people want to you know relate to something like you know that like you said it's more close is which is closer to how they feel so i think right now like jeremy and i were talking about it too during 2020 like everyone's at home writing music now so i'm like i'm so far i'm I'm really intrigued on what's come out but i like it takes like two or three years i think for everyone to usually put out music from a, a, a section uh, a session of writing for one uh, for an album or whatever it may be and then they'll have it all out but like I'm really interested in what's going to come out yeah I, everyone's I, kind of feeling the same thing you know gonna be a lot of like pent-up anger and like with Ministry's new album it was definitely written during like the Trump era you know and that definitely rubbed a lot of people the wrong way so I feel like that's going to be there's going to probably be a lot more of that too and um this yeah, in general, probably a lot of sadness too, and yeah, it's gonna be heavy, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I th- yeah, and people want to. People want to hear that. I've already kind of gotten that through conversations <laughs> with average people, like they. You know, I kind of have like a theory. Like, I feel like, um, I feel like a lot of people are kind of complaining that like alternative culture has become kind of mainstream, and I feel like it just kind of depends on the um, like perspective that you're looking at it from because like you know you go out you go to like the grocery store you're not gonna see like some goth girl you know most likely it's probably just gonna be like normal you know people um but I do feel like it's kind of fitting because I feel like it's kind of this like resurgence of like bloom and I feel like it's fitting that it's kind of becoming not more mainstream but I mean that's probably how most people are kind of like feeling you know what I mean like after all this shit's happened and um I mean, sure, it's kind of annoying when you see, like, somebody you went to high school with, like, now wearing demonios or whatever, you know, but uh, you it's know. also, you know, it's, like, kind of makes sense, too. I don't know. There's, like, good and bad. Sure. I mean, yeah, like you said, it's about perspective. I mean, if you go to somewhere where everyone who dresses like that is, then you think, oh, well, everyone is doing this now. Okay. But you know, there's there's two things come to mind. There's like when something becomes like pop music, even if it's like alternative, like Pearl Jam and Nirvana became huge. It's not because they were bad, you know. Pe- True. You know, people like good music, so there's that aspect of it. Um, the other thing is, uh, uh, I lost my train of thought, but yeah, it's. It's not always that cut and dry. And, like, people change, too. Like, if you want to change your style up, you have the right. Yeah. As long as you, you know, and then, but it, you don't have to have the attitude that comes with, like, say, being goth. There's, like, a perceived attitude, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that doesn't, that's not necessarily set in stone. I mean, if there's folks who fake, fake that kind of, you know, trendy trendy is not even a bad thing either like what i'm trying to get at is we do and trends come and go too so it's like say this person's following this trend and you're like damn that's not that doesn't really seem like your kind of thing It'll yeah where are you come away from. but you'll still be there yeah 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 you know what i think what we're kind of touching on is like where are you coming from this sudden change in your lifestyle because mm-hmm. i think it should be okay to change up your way of thinking does it follow what you're doing in life you know like Like, I wish, like, I'm trying to learn to sew, right? My 
my uh, dad's in a, a car, car upholsterer. Really good. Um, actually, I have some pants I did, but I if I could customize my own clothes, I'd look way. I look a lot. I look way different. I would look way different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, where are these? So yeah, like I have. I don't know how you feel about leather, but I love. I'm wearing a leather harness right now. Oh okay. <laughs> well, I have what's called vegan leather. It's like mostly polyester. I don't think it's leather. It's just I got this jacket. I I can't pull it out now, but like you know, I put that on there. My friend also helped me with doing that. So like, you know, different. Ooh. You know. Um, Stuff like that. Um, stuff like that. So, like, these are old pants, and I have projects waiting. Like, I always, like, recycle old shirts. Mm-hmm. Use as um, patches. I was going to say, that's what I made my patches out of. My little, my little, these guys. This is an old shirt. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. And those, and those patches are for sale on your There's camp? There, oh, okay. yeah, get All right. Um. I have more stuff too, but yeah, I'm, that's like a path I'm going down. I like want to customize my clothes more. I have a leather jacket that I've customized and I'm planning on putting more pins on it, but I'll go grab it. I'll be right back. All right. So I have this denim jacket that I didn't really mention yet, but it has skinny puppy and a gram. This is kind of old. I kind of updated. it. Um, it says a tragedy called love. It's old. Um, Robert Smith. Cool, cool. B. Nine Inch Nails. Oh, um, yeah, I've seen a picture you wearing this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a picture of me there. But then, like, I prefer this one. I think it's cooler. Um, but it's still got you know. Did you the... put that on there on the sleeve there? Yeah, I painted all this. Little Nine Inch Nails. Oh, I can see that pin. Okay. Very... Got the oh, worm head pin. Oh damn. Jeremy ministry skinny puppy the cure okay. nine inch nails nights are ebb and then we have queens of the stone age oh that's that's pretty good thanks yeah um i don't have my denim jacket with me still moving stuff over but um but yeah i have plans when i get some time to actually learn um so anyway this is my leather jacket. Oh, yeah, that brand is good. I follow them. Oh, yeah. No, I love them. It took me a while to get this one, though. It's funny, though. My I was at, I only wore this, like, a couple times out. And my friend Kaya, you know, saw it. He was like, it's a cool jacket. Yeah, thanks. It's, like a, little, it's a little bit BDSM, uh, BDSM kind of. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, it's just like, I looked at myself. It was like, you know, that was a good one. Because <laughs> I thought, oh, okay, I see it. Uh, so, you know, it's not traditional leather jacket for me because it doesn't have the um, straps here on the on the shoulders. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to add that. And I want to take off some of these, like, um, zipper handles. Just a few of them. They kind of get in the way. And then I yeah. have some back patches for it. And I'm going to add a pocket. So, yeah. Sick. Yeah. I've been wanting to wear this for a while. Again, I don't have I don't have anywhere to take it. Yeah. And you know, I I wear really plain clothes nowadays. Maybe a band T-shirt once in a while because like I'm not impressing anyone. So like if I wear this out of nowhere, it's like, hey, Bo, changed it up, huh? I've had this jacket four years. <laughs> That's funny. Yep. Four years, not four years. Oh, four. okay. I see what you mean. Well. Yeah. English is funny. We use the same words for and mean several different things. Good old homophones, I believe. Yeah, that is what it's called. Thank you. You know, I've, I keep describing this to people and I keep forgetting the name of that. Like, like fresh water. Can you have fresh water, unsalted water? Or I just got this water for you. Yeah. You know, fresh. True. Thank you very much. Um, I guess we'll start to wrap this up. Um. I gotta pee. <laughs> Ew, dude, let's let's what? pee together. No, I'm just um, no. <laughs> no, pass on all that right, one. All right. All right.
uh, well, we'll wrap it up first here. So, so Kyron, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be the, is it the first interview of Crimson? Yep. Thank you very much. So yeah, this video, it will be out before we put it on the magazine. So there's going to be a, a transcript of this interview. And we're gonna yeah, you'll definitely probably want to cut it up a lot, though, because I realize we've been recording for like a couple hours. Yeah, I mean, I'm hopefully not, you know, hopefully not too much for the video version. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there'll be like certain things on the written version that I think won't be in the video version. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe this whole little part of me talking about how I'm editing it, which I should have saved for the end. But yeah. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, where can people find you on online? Um, well, I have little things throughout, but I'd say my main place for music is going to be Chiron Music. Um, and then I'm on Spotify, Bandcamp, Apple Music, um, SoundCloud, if you do that. Ooh, cool. Um, probably a couple more, but those are like the main ones. Um, yeah, I noticed if, if anyone goes to her Instagram, of uh, Chiron's Instagram, um, she has a link to her uh, it's a page it's a card.co so there's a link to everything mm -hmm. so if you you know this is probably something she hasn't mentioned I think there's like one thing but yeah that's where you go to find Kyron Tis. all right um and for having me thanks yeah dude, this was fun twas yeah I again I appreciate it and yeah you uh you keep doing your thing like uh we're always rooting for you over here thanks and always try to be happy and healthy all right same with you okay i'm just gonna pause it right